Good morning, friends. We are uh, with another episode of NK's Lockdown Musings. This time, I'm going to take you on a different journey, a journey into the stock market. Now, most of us have been sitting at home, twiddling our thumbs or using the thumbs to do some good work. But many of us have indulged ourselves in the stock market in the past. And during this phase where uh, the COVID-19 has struck, the stock market has lost about 30% in its market cap. Now, this has affected a lot of small investors. Obviously, the big investors uh, will not be that much affected. But the small investors definitely will be affected. To discuss this with me today is Naveen Fernandez. Now, he's a certified financial planner, just one of 2,000 in India. He also teaches at Christ College and uh, St. Joseph's College in Bangalore. In fact, he is joining me from Bangalore. Uh, and he is also a former portfolio manager. Now, he has got about 30 years of experience, just about the amount of uh, fall in the stock market. Right? Uh, so he probably can throw some light on what has actually happened to the stock market, what will happen to the stock market, and what do you do as an investor. Naveen, can I just begin by asking you, what has happened to the stock market? I think everybody is concerned about that. It's fallen by about 30%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 30% and a little more. Good morning, Brian, and uh, hi, folks. Um, I'd like to take this in two, two bits, two parts, actually. The first is um, whether the COVID itself is the reason for the market's fall. Uh, the other is what impact COVID-19 will have on the market. For one, I think as in previous crashes in the Indian or even global markets, um, the markets needed an excuse rather than a reason to fall. The markets were overheated. The Indian markets were extremely expensive, close to being in cuckoo land for about two and a half years. This is simply an excuse that triggered the fall. Uh, in 2008, we had Shanghai followed by uh, the uh, uh, subprime and bear stunts, which triggered it. The problem existed. So in India, if you look at the Indian markets now, the trigger was COVID. The reason was extremely expensive valuations in the market. First, the second part is that this virus, the coronavirus and its global implications have accelerated the fall. We've fallen about 30%. We need to look at the previous peaks in the Indian market and the crash since then. Let's look at 1992, 94, 2000, 2008. All these, the markets fell about 65% from their peak. In valuation terms, I do not talk of index numbers, but index valuations, the markets were in this very expensive zone for more than two years. And we've just seen, in my opinion, just half the fall in the index. How much more will, they, uh, will the market fall? Uh, I think there we are in uncharted territory besides 65% uh, where the market could mimic previous falls. Uh, the unprecedented impact of COVID, I think, could push us to lower levels. Uh, the last major global impact of this kind would be the Black Plague in Europe, where about a third of the population died, and it created a social and economic change in the entire environment. Will that happen with us now? Possibly. I wouldn't like to bet otherwise. I do understand that the markets have fallen, and the COVID is not the reason, is what you're saying. But the fact of the matter is that the COVID-19 epidemic as it has happened and the lockdowns that have happened thereafter are going to shut a lot of businesses or they are going to take a long time to revive. There is another issue. The crude oil prices have dropped because the productions, production has gone up substantially 
by Saudi Arabia because they could not reach an agreement with Russia. There is no place to store the crude oil. There's a glut in the market because there is no consumption because of the stop in the production by the COVID-19 lockdown. So these are effects that are going to last for some time. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Indeed. once once the uh, effects continue to last, the stock market revival is very difficult to say. As you said, 30% is not the end of it. It could go down further. Am I correct? Yes. The first part is that the anticipated fall in line with previous falls would give us another 35% downside from here. First. The other is that uh, the lockdowns, and if you've read the 31st March report by uh, Howard Marks a couple of days ago, Hussman, uh, they've taken a lot of data and uh, expectations that um, unemployment would be extremely high. As it is, the US unemployment data for last week was extremely high. Uh, on a worst case, it is expected that the US unemployment would go up to beyond 20%. Um, we could see something worse than that in India, with industries, businesses shutting down, with migrant labor not being able to come back. And um, this would mean that bankruptcies, which would lead to bank non productive assets, bank losses, um, the inability of people to consume because they have no income. All this is likely to multiply and it is quite possible that the market could lose more than 65% of previous falls. Uh, at the same time, again, looking at the Howard Marks report of March 31st, he mentioned uh, research which talked of a drop in profits in corporate earnings. Let me just go back to 2007-8. Expectation for the Sensex earnings in 2008 were about 860 rupees. Uh, in January, we saw the crash and the earnings ended up at about 750, about 15% lower. Now, the possibility for the US is that the earnings would drop by as much as possibly 120%. That means 100 rupees profit would translate into 20 rupees losses going forward. Uh, that is going to tell in the uh, stock market numbers, corporate uh, results and translated to corporate prices, stock prices. At the same time, uh, I mentioned that I've been expecting this for more than two years. I have moved substantially into the bond market and I see risk there as well. I don't see the fixed income market being safe, except that I feel it is relatively a lot safer than the equity market at this time. Okay. At this moment, like in any crash, cash is king. And if you have the money to buy when things are bad, um, 1929, we had Joseph Kennedy who said, when there is blood on the streets, buy. He had cash to buy, I think. Having cash now would make people kings for a long, long time. I just don't think it's time to buy today or this week. But I think it's good to keep cash and prepare a shopping list of your dream stocks and buy them. But the dream stocks of tomorrow might not be the dream stocks of yesterday. Yeah, I think the economy is going to change. Um, of course, in the current situation, I think the pharma industry, the food industry, the uh, mask industry, the ventilator industry, that, that's the one that's prospering. Those who can prepare those or uh, manufacture those, they are prospering. But after the COVID-19 lockdown is lifted and COVID-19 disappears, which is uh, now it's a million dollar question, how it's going to disappear because there's no vaccine, there is, uh, uh, there's no way of stopping the transmission uh, unless you separate yourselves from others and how long can you separate yourself from others without having the effect on yourself and uh, on the economy and everybody else. So these are all uh, imponderables that we have to deal with. Now, given that there are small investors who have invested in mutual funds by SIPs and uh, small uh, stock buying. So I'm sure they're going to be impacted a lot. What should they do? 
Should they stay invested with the SIPs? Should they change the SIPs? Should they stop the SIPs? Should they keep buying stocks in small quantities? Should they sell off? That's what I want to ask um, you. I see question tough to answer. Uh, look at it this way. We've been talking about SIPs for a long time. I do not believe that um, a lot of the old supposed wisdom that we've inherited from our great grandparents makes sense. Equities are good for the long term. I think that is a truckload of garbage. Um, we keep hearing about Warren Buffett saying my holding period is forever. Um, a little bit of study of Warren Buffett suggests that his holding period is 18 months, not forever. He has been selling. Uh, uh, yesterday I saw a tweet by Morgan Housel where he mentioned Warren Buffett. He says holding period is till the pandemic starts. Warren Buffett has been selling. Now markets go up and down. And if you've seen the index since the last 28 years, 1992, uh, the Markets have gone up and down, and the only time the markets really performed well over a long period of time was 2002 3 to 2007 8, where in five years the market went up 700%. I'm talking of the index. Um, otherwise, the ind indices have been very poor performers. One. Uh, a study I saw about 10 15 years ago said that. Equity SIPs over the last five years, and five years is long term, are negative. You lost money. The important thing is for people to avoid the classic uh, investor or even advisor problem of greed and fear. We will buy when the markets are up. We will not buy when the markets are down. And today we have Occasionally, the market's going up, which I believe is what's called a dead cat bounce. It's a little breather where the market goes up a little bit before falling again. And this also tempts people in. I'm okay with someone who has 90% in cash. He can start biting. But for someone else, I would say, you know, just wet your lips, maybe. Um, start sipping very, very, very small, maybe invest 1% of your money in, in installments and keep some money aside for three, six months down the line where you can make, make bigger purchases. Picking stocks for the future, I can't claim to be uh, good at this. You're in Mangalore, there's this guy in Mangalore, Babakar uh, Kurwa of Samvithi Capital Life found that he's able to work well in picking good stocks. I have a good friend and uh, former neighbor, Kenneth Andrade in Bombay of uh, Old Bridge. These guys have the ability to find moats uh, and uh, do things differently from the crowd. And I think being able to do that would make a difference. But for the investor, I would say, hang on to your cash. If you can raise more cash, Sell your junk, and I think junk should be sold at any time, even if you're taking a loss. Take a loss today because you probably make a bigger loss tomorrow. What's going to be the stocks of the future or the industries of the future? I don't know. I don't think it's going to be hotels, it's not going to be aviation, um, not real estate, not automobiles, but could be pharma, could be retail. I really, I really don't know. I, I mentioned a couple of experts who I, I trust. And uh, they're possibly better equipped. Um, I don't think that mutual funds are uh, a solution. I think it is for us to advise our clients when to get into and get out of certain mutual funds and to pick the right kind of investment uh, asset class. Okay. Whether you should look at equity or debt. I looked very foolish when I told my friends and, and, and my wife two and a half years ago, let's stop our SIPs and start moving out of equity. I looked very stupid for a while. Um, I was talking to my doctor a couple of weeks ago. He was asking me why I'm so jolly. I'm happy because I looked foolish for a while and looking stupidly happy today. 
uh, Naveen, I just want to take you on to the effects of the lockdown on the economy in India. Unemployment rate was about 6.7% as per the government's own data just in the last quarter. And with the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, the lockdown and the migrant labor going back to its uh, home states, wherever it's possible, many of them are stranded wherever they are. Uh, getting back on track, both the economy and the migrant labor, getting them back on track in their employments. I think that's going to take some time. Am I right? It's going to take a lot of effort. As it is, um, various analysis of uh, GDP, um, the government numbers are one, but uh, the, act, the numbers that various analysts have given out uh, globally uh, look at extremely poor, around 2%, even negative. Wall Street Journal, I think, said that it is actually having negative GDP growth. Uh, combine that with unemployment, the difficulty of quickly getting back onto our, onto our feet um, is, is going to be a challenge. Um, I do not know how much the fiscal um, liberty, the quantitative easing, not just in India and globally, is going to help. It's um, going to make assets costlier. It's going to hurt the retired people. But at the same time, at this time, I think people who are losing jobs will have a problem just eating. Um, these retired people would have some money set aside and that would help them uh, survive. I do not know how people with uh, loans, no jobs, newly married, EMIs on their home, EMIs maybe on their car, I don't know how they will survive. Um, the moratorium that the RBI has asked banks to offer, I think is a bad idea for people to take up because it means that their interest burden will go up. Three months later, you'd be paying six months of installments. And um, this would put pressure on the person. It would put pressure on the banks. Um, if a young person defaults, it would possibly mean that they will not be able to take a loan for the rest of their life because they would be a bank defaulter and their credit score would be rotten. Now, all these uh, are problems that individuals will have to face. As, uh, as an economy, I think uh, the getting migrant workers back to work, um, maybe giving a tax holiday, GST and whatever else uh, would uh, be some kind of support. But I really don't have that solution. I, I think a moratorium is not such a good idea. I think a little bit of a waiver would have been good because uh, obviously, as you said, a moratorium means you have to pay, pay back more afterwards. And most people will be just getting back on their feet, getting back to their jobs, maybe with half salary, maybe with three fourth salary. We don't know because uh, companies also will find it difficult to pay. I just read a news item in the Gulf that the government has allowed private businesses to slash salaries by 50%, up to 50% and officially. So that's going to happen in India also. And uh, when people start to get back on their feet with about 50% salary or 75% salary, where are they going to pay their EMI from? And there are also the higher, uh, the additional installments. So these are all very big challenges. That's just one part of it. The migrant uh, part of the workforce is around 37%. And uh, they are mostly paid on a weekly basis or a daily basis. We don't know. But they are the hardest hit. They are neither uh, able to get work in their hometowns, nor will they be able to get back to work in their cities. And I think that's the greatest challenge. Now, the GDP was around 4.7% before the COVID started. It's likely to drop, as you said. And uh, the rest of 2020, unless we find a vaccine fast or we find a way to get rid of COVID very quickly, is going to be quite, quite difficult. Uh, with this, this is, a, this is just the, the, the negative side of things. But there has to be a silver lining in the cloud. Do you see any silver lining? Uh, I mentioned the Black Plague. That's helped, uh, the Black Plague of Europe. 
yeah yeah 16 numbers um, that helped the uh, marginal worker in fact if you see the classical economists they always considered labor to be paid sustenance wages all of a sudden these guys uh, were in demand because the population was smaller and that created a middle class um, whether that will repeat it, uh, now i don't know but uh, for one we would have a seriously low base on which to build this is an opportunity for the government to build infrastructure and I'm, i'm not talking about power i'm talking of uh, infrastructure in education and uh, transport in uh, medical services uh, maybe a greater link to the agricultural uh, producing areas with the consumer i think these are opportunities which um, and this lockdown has given us okay uh, i think we'll uh, come to a conclusion that there is always a silver lining in every cloud and in every covid if you if you can put it that way uh we have to look for the silver linings otherwise we'll be desperate and we'll despair and we should not we have to stay locked down until we have to we have to enjoy our conversations like we did today and with these conversations we can inject positivity in the society that's the purpose now viewers uh, i just want to conclude by saying that uh, this was a lockdown conversation obviously we were talking from our homes and you will find a dog barking in between and uh, a fly moving across the camera now these are all part and parcel of life and we cannot wish them away and just to hear the dog bark is such a pleasure we don't we don't hear the vehicle sounds but we listen to the animals bark or shout their bows out and the birds chirping and that's a great positive sign so with that we conclude thank you very much navin for joining me and we'll do another episode of lockdown musings shortly thank you very much thank you brian uh, i believe there's money to be made i wish all viewers uh, a very prosperous time it'll come soon thank you, thank you.